All right, so I'm set up to bleed here. So my bleeder bottle's up high here. My adapter's down here. And in order to fit that adapter into the bleeder screw, it needs to be, uh, the caliper needs to be back. So the, the, the shoes are over the caliper so that they can't push out and cause a problem. Um, actually, that's, um, well, it's pretty good right where it is. I was going to say I could also um, put a block of wood or something in there, but I, I don't think I need to. So now we'll crack the bleed screw open. So the screw is open. We'll put the little adapter in the end of the bleed screw. And you're already going to see is um, fluid's already starting to come up. So now I'm going to go ahead and push the pedal and we'll see what we'll see what we get out of it here. I know this next section is going to seem like uh, a video of watching paint dry, but if you want to understand kind of how the bottle works and the bleeding process, um, just follow along. So we got a little bit. I need to check to make sure that the master cylinder's still got enough in it since it's been dripping. Now let's go push the brakes again. This bleeding process is a little extra difficult because unfortunately the master cylinder did bleed down and the reservoir ran dry. And so we're not only clearing the caliper out, but we have to run all the air out from the master cylinder all the way down to the caliper. You can see if you watch the bottle in the line, you can see the air bubbles coming out, running up, and that the bottle is being filled with brake fluid, and uh, that some backflow does occur. I can see I've got some air bubbles in the line there, feeding them through. I'll give it another stroke. Even though you do get some backflow in the system, uh, you can watch, you know, the bottle, the net uh, is that you always get the bottle full after a stroke and a release. It fills more. So even though we're losing a little bit, uh, every time you get a stroke, you get uh, forward progress. I hadn't let that master cylinder run down like that. Uh, it was just because the fittings were open and it was dripping from the hose. If I hadn't let it run down, it would, this would have been an easier process with fewer strokes. I do have to say though that this little bottle, even without a check valve, uh, works really well if you're by yourself and you're trying to make this go without opening and closing the bleeder screw every time. Uh, it really does get the system cleared out and air bubbles gone and, and uh, a good bleed. Well, I've still, I've still got some bubbles in that line, but it's getting better. I'll give it one more shot and I probably have to empty that. That's looking pretty good. And I will say the service manual cautions that when you're doing this, because this has a quick take up master cylinder, 
that you need to go very slow pushing it and releasing it uh, because of that quick take up section. Oh, I still see a few air bubbles in there. Well, let me give it one more one more shot then. I guess I got it full. I thought I had room for one more. Oh, that's what the cardboard's for. Looks like the air's pretty well out though. So, I'm gonna take this one. I'll empty most of it into there. Check how much is in the master cylinder. I'll give it one more push. Yeah, I'm continuing to see bubbles flowing up, so I'm still not done. Guess I gotta keep going. That's looking better. One more for insurance. All right, that looks good and clear. That looks good and clear. Okay, so what we'll do now is my bleeder wrench right here. So now we can I'll put the cup there. Now we can pull this guy out and we can snug down the bleeder screw. for a minute. Now we'll cinch down the bleeder, make it snug. Put the, put the cap on it to keep the crud out. 